they stand up to that so they're really really stung by that Boris Lee game and they yeah, certainly came this year as a, as a team uh, on a mission for sure Just a note in there in the Munster Junior uh, Club Camogie final disappointment from Ryan they were beaten 9 points to 5 by the Kerry Chapman so well done to the girls and getting to a final disappointment with the result the pitch we mentioned earlier not a puff of wind from a hurling point of view you played here with the county you played here with the club the pitch here in, in parallel is there too much being made of it or is it a big factor today I uh, know I think there's too much being made of it it's a factor for sure I mean you know would we like a, a, a more expansive pitch of course we would you know but uh, it has a sense of a cauldron you know and the other thing is we're not playing a Dublin team we're not playing Dublin this is not Waterford versus Dublin this is two teams coming to a neutral venue so it's not exactly an advantage to Snock Neil but it has this sense gear and it has this cauldron sense because the wall is in on top of you it's not even so much that the field is that tight it is a tight pitch but it's the whole feel of the stadium is tight and that's a right. little bit claustrophobic for maybe teams that like to play an open brand of hurling the fact that Vincent mentioned there about Dara measuring the field and I believe he, he marked out a pitch last weekend down in Ballygunner to the dimensions of power and power nothing has been left a chance in oh, Ballygunner yeah look at you know I'm not, I think in any club that would be expected in the standard and you'd want to know exactly what you're dealing with and I think that would be almost standard preparation at this level in this day and age like you know so but um you know, absolutely, this team and David Franks and Dara Sullivan and Cole Rory and Patrick Hearn, they don't leave anything to chance. National Anthem, All-Ireland Semi-Final, Schlip, Schlock Neil and Bally Guller. And went to St. Vincent. Schlock Neil came down last night. Managers have had their last say. Fergal, the last call. Yeah, look, Kieran, you know, <laughs> not just with my Bally Gunner hat on, and obviously I do have, I'll find it very hard to be unbiased today, but look, you'd have to think that Bally Gunner are good enough to win this game. Well, Bally Gunner are good enough to win this game, but it doesn't always work that way, but certainly, you know, you'd have to favour Bally Gunner in this one, Kieran. Referee Sean Stack out in the middle of the field. Not a puff of wind here in Parnell Park. Bally Gunner backroom team and subs make their way up into the stand ball is in Sean Stack puts it in and our All-Ireland semi-final underway first touch Philip Mahan he tries to work away Peter Hogan on the bus towards the 45 scoops it across to the unmarked Conor Sheehan outside the D hitting into the touch end and sends it over the bar they wanted a good start they got it Hogan Sheehan over the bar poetry in motion Fergal yeah great start for Ballygunner 10 seconds on the clock or thereabouts and a score for Ballygunner so puck out down the right Oshino O'Doherty Derry senior hurling keeper sends it long inside the 65 they bat it down the Schlock Mealman they're big they're physical they're a football team they're a hurling team they've done it all a foul there hard pulling there on Chrissy McCaig he's one of their dual stars and he's been around for a good number of years he's played senior football and he's hurling and back from the international rules with Sydney Swans he's done it all he's won a free and a chance here from the um, 65 here for Cormac O'Doherty of course Cormac has been their top man 7 points the last day, 6 points from free small in statue he's the captain yeah, he's a jewel the, star that's the one thing Ballygunner don't want to do today is give away too many frees because this free taker uh, is deadly from place balls from any place we'll probably give him the, the, the kiss of death now commentator is uh, cursed but uh, he's deadly from place balls he's hitting into the goal on our left he seems to have pulled it a bit left yes he has mm-hmm. pulled it left and wide letter for Ballygunner score remains one point no score and we've hot just a minute and a half on the clock so Stephen O'Keefe with the puck out drills it down the stand side right hand side looking for Peter Hogan Hogan leaves his mark but doesn't control in the first of them it's the corner goes towards Mahoney Mahoney tries to get it back to Mikey Mikey that misplaced it there and the ball comes away McGuigan Jerome the big man into the full forward line what's going to happen inside they take a shot and Stephen O'Keefe was up to it there good scoring chance for the boys from the north and away come Bally Gunner Shane O'Sullivan from the right half back bear, sends it down to the dressing room corner far left and corner first touch for Desi doesn't get it there's two or three shot meal men around him but Bally Gunner win it back chance for Mahoney and he sends it over the bar there good long ball direct ball into Desi and Mahoney sends it over the bar Kevin there 
just did well but I think Desi worked hard for it ball broke to Kevin he sticks it over the bar but goal chance there for Slot Neil but what Saki does so well he doesn't just save the ball he gets it away from the danger zone out to Ian Kenny and the score was created from that save from Sock so two and a half minutes Belly Gunner leading here two points to no score ball over on the far side well won by Belly Gunner into Paddy Levy first touch for the under 20 star in again towards Mahoney the, coming out towards the 45 doesn't control it on the first attempt picked up instead by Karen McKay the cornerback McKay tries to work the ball out but Belly Gunner win it back there Mikey Mahoney sends it across in it goes to Peter Hogan on the D Hogan is taken on the defence Billy's a tie Billy goal what a goal there by Billy O'Keefe well worth all in and the former defender now turned attacker sticks it in the back of the net Billy does it once again he's been doing it all year Fergal what a start what a for start. the runners. What a ball from Paul McMahon. He was on the far side of the field. He was back to Peter Hogan. Spread it straight across the pitch. Great work from Peter. And what a finish from Billy O'Keefe. Great start by Lee Gunner. 1-2. No score. The ideal start. But back comes Shock Neal. Midfielder there. Chrissy McCaig tries to get it in around the full forward line there. Brendan Rodgers, the big man. He's one of the dual stars as well. He's done football and hurling and a county football as well to boot Stephen O'Keefe with the puck out Belly Gunner leading 1-2 no score ball now done down into the corner Parik Mahoney does well to win it under a bit of pressure Parik has the ball slips to the ground there tries to get it but it's beaten inside by Karen McCaig the big defender from shot Neal carries it literally out over the line there in came Mikey Mahoney a bit late in front of the linesman there and the shot Neal uh, bench there right up off their feet there bit Headless in the sense from Mikey Mahoney. You had the line ball there. Mikey came in late, came in hard, and I think referee Sean Stack to be having a word with Mikey Mahoney. Yeah, I actually didn't see what Mikey Mahoney was. I was actually watching Pouring Mahoney, and his helmet was being dragged off him on the ground right in front of Sean Stack, the referee. He's been held on the ground, his dr- he- held down, his helmet was thrown off, as we can see him coming off here now. And okay, Mikey Mahoney might have come in late down there, but I think there should be a yellow card for a Slot Neal man as man. And another thing to note here, Kieran, straight away, Slot Neal put in a sweeper. Two man Mark and Desi, as you can see there, right, in, right on the edge of the square. Literally one in front, one behind. So Desi's going to struggle to get ball today for sure. Yeah, McNeil and Cassie taking up Desi. Line ball. Billy O'Keefe down into the right hand corner the entrance corner Desi comes out and wins it tries to make room for himself drops to the ground picks it again 20 metres out tries to work the ball back gets it back to Kevin Manny. Kevin gets it to Peter Hogan Peter Hogan is Desi inside can he get it to Desi Desi doubles oh he tried to double it there the ball came across he didn't put his hand and he doubled it and Oshino Doherty had no problem in saving the, the connection from Desi wasn't the best connection but a lot of lovely move ball out the field again 1-2 no score the Gunners lead Connor Sheehan giving it to his midfield partner Paddy Levy tripped to the ground there did he play it on the ground yes says the referee Sean Stack on the spot there Connor Sheehan picked it up well give it to his midfield partner he slipped played the ball on the ground free for Shock Neal he did but I know getting frustrated Parik Manny is having his he's running he's having his jersey pulled in front of the linesman in front of the referee I know it's, and it was a free to Shock Neal but Parik Manny should have had a free before this he's been dragged and teared every time he, every time he moves by, uh, by Shane McGuigan number 5 for, for Shock Neal so the free for Schlock Neal, they were wide with the last one, Cormac O'Doherty, a dual star, Derry Senior Hurler starred in the county final for them, he's been their go-to man over the last number of years, they've won four Ulsters, they've won nine in a row Derry titles, they're an experienced side, concentrating on the small ball for the last eight weeks, Doherty hits it, that's a good score. and that's a good score from his own 65, give him the ball, he'll do the damage and that's one thing as you mentioned earlier Fergal Belly Gunner have to be careful 1-2 a point 6 minutes gone yeah, and one thing for our listeners at home Stock Neal now have 2 sweepers in place so there's 4 defenders marking 2 Belly Gunner attackers on the inside line Desi there gets the ball lovely 1-2 with Hogan Desi from distance I think he's pulling a bit right is it going to go in no it's gone right and wide there shot on sight there right and wide second right for Belly Gunner score remains Belly Gunner 1-2 Stock Neal 1 point you're listening to the big match. We're live here on WLR. Fergal Hartley and myself, Kieran O'Connor, bringing you all the action from Parnell Park here in Dublin. Not a puff of wind. Pitch in good condition. It may be a tight pitch, but so far, Belly Gunner are making space for themselves. From the puck out, Paddy Levy wins it from his own 45. Sending it into space there. A lot of space there. And picking it up is Cormac 
McAllister, the centre back there, a lot of time there, and covering back as well was Bradley, the centre, the wing forward, now gone back. So they have that extra man in defence, and now they have the ball over on the far side. Carl McCaig, was he fouled? They play it back there, the full back line there, all wearing green helmets, but they work it back to Ger Bradley, the big man, normally midfielder, plays it into the right hand corner, looking for the big full forward. That's Brendan Rogers. Rogers likes to take on his marker, shoots from side, from the sideline. That's a super score by Brendan Rogers. Literally standing on the sideline, the county footballer shows he's no mean hurler, sends it over the bar. Yeah, Schlockney know what they're doing, they worked that ball, they worked that ball all around the half back line, you know, as many passes as they took, and then they put the perfect ball into Bradley inside. Stephen O'Keefe looking again for Peter Hogan, a small man marking a big man, but it works as the ball runs through to Mikey Mahoney. Under a bit of pressure there from McAllister in the half back line, out comes the full back Sean Cassidy. Cassie works it back to Karen McCaig. Mark Karen McCaig sends it down to the D. They're looking for the big man inside Rogers. What can he do with it inside there? She McGuigan had, but Rogers has taken on his marker, turning to his left. Oh, he didn't connect with that one. Had good scoring chance, tries to work the ball back, works it into a bit of traffic. Paddy Levy tries to come in and alleviate the problem from a belly gunner point of view. A lot of pressure by belly gunner defence. Shock Nilo, they're out now to the 45, they're in at the 20, now they're working it out. Lovely bit of control there by Cormac O'Darty. But Stutes are literally standing on the sideline, left and wide. Uh, good pressure, I must say, by the belly gunner defence, right and wide. Second really, wide for Schlockney. Brilliant skill by Cormac O'Darty, he's a really, really good hurler at midfield, and if that went over, it would have been one of the scores of the season. Yeah, one of their county stars, ball towards Billy O'Keefe, taking the puck out from his brother Stephen Saki, out to Conor Sheehan. Connor sends the ball in but again the extra defender there inside they're going to cause problem there Ger Bradley is just sitting on the D and he wins that ball down into the full forward and it goes this could be dangerous inside Brian Cassidy tries to get it turning to his left has a look takes his shot Cassidy sends it over the bar there good ball into the corner Cassidy did the rest he's on the county senior team for the hurling you can see why yeah, I mean, it was all Ballygunner for the first four or five minutes. But since then, Slockneel have taken over three points in a row. One, two to three points. Ballygunner leading by two. That goal proving crucial from Billy O'Keefe. Ballygunner on the attack. And again, Bradley there sitting back. The socks are up and he means business here this afternoon. They clear the ball. Out towards the middle. Drop inside the 45. Oh, Shane goes high and wins that ball. Good play by Shane O'Sullivan. Oldest on the team, but playing like a teenager. Gets the ball back. Out as far as Ty Foley, his nephew. Ty gets the ball now. Steadies himself. Tries to send in low towards Desi. Desi has it. Will he take on his marker? That's exactly what he's going to do. Desi being teased by Paul McNeil. What's he foul? Play on, sir. Slips, but then fires to get his shot in. Oh, that's a super score by Desi there. Took on his marker, McNeil. Slipped to the ground. Who else could do it? turned over his shoulder super score Desi yeah what a score he was almost off his knees you know t- away from goal what a score slipped to the ground but he's been marked very very tightly there by I think it's John Cassidy yeah 1-3 to 3 points there so the, the fourth of back to McKay Cassidy and McNeil really tight and two of them keeping an eye on Desi here this afternoon ball towards the middle of the field all wearing green helmets which is not easy from a commentator's point of view with that full back line ball towards Mikey Mahoney the younger of the brothers loses possession there bursting out with the ball is Connor McAllister. McAllister gets it inside to the big man inside. Rogers likes to take on his marker, takes on Cochrane, sends it over the bar there. The big man is doing the damage, they're feeding him inside. He's a dual star, he's a footballer, but what a decent hurler he is as well. Yeah, Back to two points. Very, very clever in terms of their use of the ball. They don't waste any ball, Kieran. Good puck out. Out to Ronan Power. First touch here for the under 20 star. Lovely catch and turn there by Kevin Mahoney. Kevin sends a lovely diagonal. Looking for Billy. Billy leaves it through to Desi. Desi Hudson on the 20. Shortens the grip. Takes his shot. Oh, he just slipped again. Lost his footing. Took a very heavy tackle there. Now the Schlockney crowd down under us aren't happy with that. But Desi, the minute he turned, there was a hurley coming in. Referee Sean Stack says definitely a free. And from here it looked like it was. But let's hope Desi is okay to, to resume. But uh, he's really on fire. They're giving him the ball. But as you say, Schlockney. Neil have that man back sweeping and uh, they're really trying to just cut off the supply to Desi. Yeah and, and Ballygunner typically are good at dealing with the, with the sweeper because we deal with it almost every day but that sweeper in Bradley he's the number 12 he's sitting back there right in front of Desi and he's doing a lot of damage but one thing here and again I know I've, I'm, I'm repeating myself now but again in that passage of play 
say Cormac Manny was dragged to the ground Jersey pulled back dragged to the ground I think the referee the linesman have to see this the referee has to do something about it Desi's carrying a bit of an injury coming into this game so just hoping of all the players we don't want to lose is Desi Hutchinson he's our absolute marksman he's our marquee player he's the one that he's our go-to man particularly when he needs to score running repairs Desi okay the Fitzpatrick sisters out keeping an eye on things of course Dad Shea part and parcel of the backroom team as well as Pauric just inside the 20 metre line should have no mistake hitting into the church end as it's called here in Danny Carney sends it over the bar good score Pauric and really getting just but he's played he's done a lot of hard work despite being his first score of the afternoon He's doing a lot of, of, of the donkey work. Yeah, and that's something you'll always get from Park. He'll always work his way into a game. So you'll see more of Park Manny for sure during this game. Ball out to the half back line there. Ronan Power trying to get onto it. Philip Mahoney trying to get his hand onto it. He's on the 45. Can he get it away? That's exactly what he does. Gets it away brilliantly to Hogan. Hogan gets to Billy. Billy offloads it. Ronan Power coming forward. Standing on the sideline. Hit it and hope more than anything else from this. And standing on the sideline. It's left and wide. Wide number three for Belly Gunner. Score remains. 1-4. Four points. Four points between the side. That crucial goal after three and a half minutes. Really a game changer from a Belly Gunner point of view by Billy O'Keefe. Puck out. Down and right. O'Sheen O'Doherty. The Derry senior hurling keeper. He's experienced. Decent football baller as well drop inside the 45 the big man going for his Jerome McGuigan socks up as always delight when the commentator sees that makes it easy to identify a player as Ali Gunner come away with that ball there and Ian Kenny there was he fouled out over the line line ball I think for Belly Gunner but Ian Kenny showed good pace there to lose his marker but out over the line line ball Belly Gunner Paddy Levy coming out to take it yeah, that's what Ian Kenny is great at Kieran. he's great on his feet he's very nimble he's able to sidestep players and uh, great work there in sideline ball Belly Gunner the black and red of Belly Gunner they're here in numbers today the bus left early Kevin Manley holding on to that ball was he foul play on the Schlotten crowd roaring there for a free at every turn very vocal down hunters to the right and the ball is won back by Schlott Neal the ah, right wing back Shane McQuiggan there the 24 year old seemed to fall on the ground with his knee but referee Sean Saxick free out in relief yeah I think you know effort. well absolutely there was another one exactly the same just before that but look at him I'm, I'm going to be biased today Karen, yeah. for sure Cormac O'Doherty sends it into the into the D area covering back Connor Sheen lovely play by the Moon Tour based in Limerick but very much a proud belly gunner man. Ball out to Paddy Levy. Again, one of the under 20 stars. Opens the shoulders. 45 metres out. There. Oh, into the D it goes. Into the hand of Ger Bradley. He says, thank you very much. And the Schlott Neal sweeper sends him down into the attack. Looking for Mark McGuigan inside in the corner. Well won inside by Philip Mahoney. Scoops it away to Paddy Levy. Paddy Levy looking for options. One of those options is Billy. Billy O'Keefe inside. Goes high. Battled away from by Karen McKay out towards the middle of the field there but Schlott Neal are really really battling hard as the ball breaks to Peter Hogan outside the 45 Hogan on the run shortens the grip and Hogan sends it over the bar we spoke about it before very underrated you always raise them highly Fergal he delivered the beauty there yeah we're kind of living off scraps in that regard uh, Kieran but a play like that where the, the sweeper the, 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 the Schlott Neal sweep, sweeper has been very very effective we're playing ball straight into him which is unlike Ballygunner not sure what happened here yeah Porrick's helmet he man seems to be at his helmet and uh, I think uh, Porrick's saying to Sean Stack the referee I'm not quite sure was there a flick back or whatever but I, I, he's not going out but, it, but if, if Porrick is flicked back he deserve, he's been dragged every time he goes near the ball and at some stage you're going to flick back and that's what seems to me what happened here in a slot yeah. player down but I think the referee needs to come to terms with that sooner than later because something's going to happen the first aid man is telling him stay down I, yeah. think, I think it looks more dramatic well, we didn't see what happened there but the work rate of Schlock Neal they're really in Belly Gunner's faces Absolutely. in every sense for yeah yeah and, and, and look exactly if you're a slot deal, Michael McShane is a very very shrewd operator the manager exactly what you're going to tell him to do tear and drag make sure you stop that moving from Bally Gunner but the one thing surprisingly from a Bally Gunner's perspective is we're hitting ball down straight on top of the D straight on top of that sweeper we're normally hitting them deep into the corners for Desi as the runner this time we've put four or five balls straight into that sweeper and that's causing a stiffly we need to come to terms with that but as you say Bally Gunner have come up against sweeters, sweepers oh, over the last absolutely. eight years so it's, yeah. it's nothing new it's nothing them, new yeah. but I, I, I've not seen us handle it as poorly as we are today so far Running repairs are okay. Schlank Neal are ready to fire, and the ball is poked out from our right. It's 1 5 to 4 points. Double scores. Ball goes to Jerome McGuigan on the run. Steadies himself outside the D. Can he get a score on the run? That's exactly what he's done there. Super Great score. score. Normally full forward, no, it's centre forward. Kept the ball on his stick without putting his hand to it. That's as good as you'd see for him. Yeah, them. super score. He's a big unit, uh, Kieran. He runs at you. He's very, very hard to stop, and uh, that's as good a score as we're going to see today. He had his two catches taken. He do- he had half dummy, took it under Hurley again, and a brilliant, brilliant score. Fergal won five to five. The water break, the first water break 
how happy will Dara be with that? Or how I concerned don't think he, he will be, be happy. Mm. I mean, look at we weren't coming up here expecting to be ten points up at the water but against a, against a team of the calibre, four time Ulster champions of, of Slot Neil. But I think the thing they won't be happy with, I think, is our use of ball. I think too many occasions we've hit the ball down on top of their spear man. And that is something we're normally good at. We're composed on the ball. We look up, we either find a, an, an out ball wide or we go deep into the corners for the runner Desi. But that hasn't happened today for some reason, and that's something they're going to have to come to terms with. Would you be trying to isolate Desi in the full forward and put somebody out and leave Desi play over nearly in the right Absolutely, hand corner? Absolutely, and what we need to be doing is put, put someone. Thinking. We, we need to put someone like Billy sitting on the D, man marking their sweeper. That's what they're doing with Philip Manny on the, on the far side. If you see, yes. Philip is never getting the ball on his own. So you put somebody on Bradley. On, on Bradley, the sweeper, okay? So when the ball comes, at least it's not, he's, not, he's not winning the ball. At least he's been contested for the ball, and the ball will at least break and not coming out there. And they're setting up attacks from there. But look, usually what we're doing is we're sitting balls down sitting Peter Hogan sitting out wide Mikey Manny sitting out wide we're popping balls to them and we're working it from there that's not happening for us today he expected a contest you're getting a contest oh, absolutely perfect, yeah. and these are good hurlers as well they're aggressive you know they're spirited they're, they came with and a plan and they've concentrated with the last eight weeks absolutely on and you can see some of their hurling has been brilliant number 14 Brendan Rogers. he's got some great scores he's causing difficulty for Barry Cockland and the big lad at Jerome McQuiggan is just after getting a super point and Cormac O'Doherty if he got that point the one that he whipped back and put over the bar would have been one of the scores of the season Play resumes down our left Stephen O'Keefe Saki to resume play where will he send this one it's down the right hand side there looking for Billy brother Billy but it's cut off there, well inside by the defenders there Michal McGrath he's a decent hurler two and a half back line Conor Sheen comes in a late tackle on Conor Sheen right in front of the linesman there he had to see it yes he did it's a free there but Conor Sheen they're coming in with that trailing hurley a lot I know the midfielder is shaking his head there but uh, they're really leaving that leaving that hurley trail yeah, and a free from Parry Manny is just just beyond midfield, almost on the far 65, but certainly within his middle. There's a puff of wind today, which is perfect for a free taker. He has the range for sure. Three It'll metres be, in from the yeah, sideline. It'll be a great score if it goes over. Hitting it into the church here in Danny Carney here on the right. The, the local parish priest wasn't falling asleep when he was charging people a fiver to park in the church car park there as they take that free and Parry really? sends it over the bar. Brilliant. That was a good score. You take those for granted, but that was just three minutes in from the sideline. He's on 65, he planted it. Yeah, and a little bit of pressure on the moment. I mean, the game is slipping away, not slipping away, but Schlock Neener getting a foothold in this game. It's a score we needed. Brilliant, brilliant free from One six to five points. They lead by four. You're listening to the George Corbett's big match here on WLR. Wherever you're listening, I hope you're enjoying. Schlock Neal have the ball. The midfielder there, Cormac O'Doherty, trying to feed it in. They're looking for the big man inside, Brendan Rogers. Oh, well won inside by Conor Sheehan. Ran into a bit of traffic coming out with the ball, dispossessed inside by the midfielder there Chrissy McCaig but in the end it goes right and it goes wide turn wide for Schlock Neal score remains 1-6 belly gunner 5 points Schlock Neal but definitely they're taking the game to the gunners the Ulster champions 4 time Ulster champions beaten in all Ireland semi-finals but they're hoping this will be their year the men from the north ball into Billy O'Keefe their good low ball shoulder high there he caught it dropped it to the ground and now he's coming up the, the sideline stand side hitting into the church goal has a look oh hit the upright right and wide there did everything perfect he's showing well for the ball won the ball well hit the upright right and wide yeah he did everything right great effort and hit the upright and wide but funny enough Billy got that ball probably using that space that Desi typically tries to use and obviously Desi is our target man we want as much ball getting yeah, him are you a bit crowded can. inside the yeah, 45 possibly, yeah. you've, you've three men in there it looks a bit crowded here in Parnell Park ball one inside by Tyke Foley what a season he has had in the corner back Bert ball does, does Kevin come out and gets that ball trying to get into Billy O'Keefe there Billy behind his marker there not the best place to be for a defender they tried to come away with that ball but in the end has it gone out over the line Billy keeping the pressure on ball played back to the keeper O'Sheen O'Doherty he opens the shoulder older brother of Cormac who's at the other end of the field Dropping aside the 65, ball booted on the ground. Of course, they're decent footballers as well. The big man wins it. Chrissy McCaig. Chrissy sends it in. They're looking for Rogers inside. Rogers and Cochran, two big men entangled. Cochran comes out with a good play by the former Walker's fullback. Gets it away to Ty Foley. Ty out to Paddy Levy on the 45. Almost bounces it off the referee, Sean Stack. Gets the ball away. Peter Hogan, the man from Teva, down into the corner goes to Mahoney. A lovely play by Pauri. Brilliant control by Pauri. Oh, he hits it there over the shoulder. He'll be disappointed. It's right and it's right, but he's immediately running out to get his There feet. he is again. I mean, they have to come to terms with this. Warwick, 
Mr. Strike, he's been hit to the ground again by McGuigan. He has to. Right in front of the referee. He has to come to terms with this at this stage. Yeah, he's coming over to the linesman here because it's been ongoing since the start. And interesting to see what he's going to say here, but uh, Parry there, the minute he shot wide, he was running out to position and uh, in came the Schlock Neil men, but uh, the referee says play on, he's just uh, but that even way, the he, he showed him to the ground, but that wasn't the worst thing, it's dragging, it's pulling, it's turning to the ground and every time he runs for a ball. Christy McCaig playing international rules down under, he played with Sisney Swans. He's no shrinking violet, I can tell you, when it comes to physicality. Conor Sheehan says, and he's cut off by Ger Bradley. He's really sweeping everything that's going into that danger zone. They're on the attack now, dropping inside the 20 meter line. It's well won inside by the men inside McGuigan. McGuigan works it out. Oh, good. Jerome McGuigan. And he sends it over the bar there. Matt McGuigan to Jerome McGuigan. And the McGuigan brothers do the business. And Jerome sends it over. He's a danger man. 1 6 to 6 points. Yes. That goal separates. Watch that Neil deserve. I mean, they are running really well. But that sweeper is causing Ballygunner too much problems. I see Martin Fogley there, former Wexford selector, of course. National hurling coach and, and director taking in everything Humphrey Kellar down under there as well the Abbey side man former Dublin manager as well down under enjoying the fair good crowd here to stand seems to be a very good crowd here in the stand here and uh, I must say the northern crowd are here in fourth but belly gunner also good support for the Watford champions from the breaking ball pulled away first time Michal McGrath cut off well by Philip. Philip gives it up to Billy. Billy in space. Doesn't get it on the first line. Does on the second. What's Billy going to do with this one? Turns to his left. Oh, did he hit it too casual? Oh, it's gone right and wide there. Turned his marker brilliantly, but right and wide. Yeah, just barely, barely left of that post. Great work by Tyke Foley. Giving good ball to Billy O'Keefe. And Billy Devering right, but again second ball row was just, just inches wide. Yeah, Conor McAllister there just stayed goal side. Billy got away from but unfortunately didn't hit it really with conviction. It was a lobby type of shot that just drifted left and wide. Six wides to three with the scoreboard counts. One six Bally Gunner. Six point Schlock Neal from the hook out. The men from the north have the ball again. They're inside the 45. They have options there. Gene McGuigan has the shot. All oh, drops under the crossbar. Was that saved? Yes. Or a, a late he pull. Given the advantage. He had the arm up the referee. He's given the advantage and he's pulled it back. So this will be a tap over free for uh, for a for a free take like Cormac yeah. for sure. Shee McGuigan, he's been quiet, but he was gone away from his mark. But as you say, the ref had the hand up, had signaled he was giving the advantage. Dropped in and well saved inside by Stephen O'Keefe. Literally nearly gone over the bars. He went up and cut that one. But it is a free for Schlock Neal. It's 1-6-6, and he should put this one over. And uh, this will bring you back to two. And two but, points. And as we mentioned, fair, Jerome you know, McGuigan a, is a good man. Yeah, or Cormac or good men have placed balls. So it'll be a fair reflection of the game as well. Like, you know I mean? Schlock Neil are very much value for this. As I say, this will be 1 6 to 7. We're assuming this goes over. And it's a fair reflection of the game. And Schlock Neil are a good value for that scoreline. The captain of the side, very much a go to man when it comes to freeze for both club and county. And he sends it over to Barra. Second for him. It's back to a two point game. 23 minutes gone here. It's 1 6 to 7. Belly Gunner, of course, hoping to get to their first ever. All Ireland final. Mount Sain got there, De La Salle got there, but the black and red have never got to the big day in Crow Park. From the hook out, ball towards Levy there, pushing the back and a free out and relief for Belly Gunner. So it's up to Belly Gunner, as you said, uh, not giving away a simple freeze. And uh, in fairness to Stack, I think he's getting more in control. Horg man is going for a free there and McGuigan just hits him on the arm as he's going for a free. I mean, the referee has to see this and has to come to terms with it. I know your listeners are probably absolutely sick of me saying this, but it's non-stop at this stage, right? This is on the far 45s. So it's a huge one for Horg Manny. It's one bally gunner need, but it's certainly, certainly a long, long way out. Not a bad angle, but a long, long way out. So it's his own 45. It's a huge, huge distance here in Parnell Park, hitting into the right-hand goal, the churchyard goal here in Donny Carney in North Dublin he's caught it well but it's going to drop short into the danger zone it's a case of who gets the breaking ball Mikey Mann he seems to be getting in under it if he can he gets into his hand there out towards Dizzy Mikey has it he's turning he's, can he work it back did he overplay play answer the referee ball in towards Kevin now Kevin Mahoney two men around him oh, the break, sends it over the bar there's determination the from you Kevin O'Mahony his granddad Kevin former manager in Waterford will be thrilled with that that's a great score that's Kevin. a brilliant score if you see the position he got the ball in with three men to beat and to get it over his shoulder an absolutely fantastic Showed great score. determination great, that was yeah. inspiration type of point because uh, only for he was so determined 
First of all, to shake off the tackle, and secondly, to get that strike. It's one seven to seven. Just one goal separates the sides. That goal comes from Billy O'Keefe after three and a half minutes. From the puck out, Michal McGrath coming forward for Schlock Neal. He loves to come forward, this man. He's on the Derry County team. He's in on the D. Flicks the ball away under a bit of pressure. Cormac O'Doherty. O'Doherty takes a shot, and he sends it over the bar. Number three for the small midfielder, but they work that ball well, and in the end, when you give Doherty a chance, he'll send it over. It's 1 7, the eight points back to a two point game. Yeah, they're well able to work that ball and put themselves into a scoring position, and when they're there, they're normally finishing well. They've been finishing very well today. Michael McChain, the Banish Door, of course, brothers on the team, a lot of brothers in the small community and tight knit community up in Schlockneil. They win the ball again. The maroon and white hoops, ball towards the middle of the field. Cormac O'Doherty sprays the ball way over to the other side. Brian Cassidy sending it into the full forward line looking for that big man inside Rogers. Rogers and Barry Coughlin Rogers has punched the ball away this could be dangerous what's he going to do with it in the end says the referee play on the ball comes out to Paddy Levy there Coughlin and Rogers are having a good heavyweight battle inside ball out towards Kevin Mahoney Kevin gives it to the younger brother Mikey Mikey looking for options sharpens the grip down into right hand corner to Desi Desi on the D Desi on the turn Desi with the shot Oh, left and wide. Did everything right there. And that, I must say, the Schlock Neal defender there just turned on Dizzy there straight away. And I think referee uh, Sean Stack uh, yeah, he at deserves, last. And actually, he's not the worst defender, but they deserve to get a little card this because it's constant, this niggle, this pulling, this dragging. I mean, Dizzy misses a ball. He's jumping up in his face. He deserves a yellow card for this. This is, a, you know, it's, 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 I'd say it's beyond unsportsmanlike behaviour. So Ger Bradley there wearing 12, but he's the sweeper. And he's the man going into the little red book of Sean Stack. 26 minutes, 178 points. Belly Gunner leading by two. Shot Neil on the run again inside the 45. What can they do with this one? They've sent it over the bar there. Good score by the half forward. He sent it over the bar. Good score, Bradley. Yeah, and their dander is up now, Kieran, and they're playing full of confidence. And you know they were rocked by one-two early on, but certainly they've turned it back into this game, and they've, they've been the, the better team since Bally Gunner got scored that one-two. Bradley was man of the match in the muster fine from midfield, pushed up to the forward line today. He's doing the damage. Just one seven to nine, just one point between the sides. Twenty-six minutes, almost twenty-seven here in Parnell Park in Dublin. Ball over on the far side. You're listening to WLR's big match. Our thanks to George Corbett, Skoda, as always. I'm sure George is, he- George is here and all the family supporting the belly gunner men in black and red. Ball over the line, line ball on the far side, inside the 45. It's 1-7 to 9. A score before half time will be crucial, and belly gunner would like to get some bit of a cushion there, a point up. But really, um, Schlock Neil have taken over after the first seven or eight minutes yeah. when, when belly gunner. So well drilled, Kieran. If you're watching them inside and the way they're closing down the space, belly gunner love creating space and using that space. And I haven't seen any team this year or in a couple of years closing down that space for belly gunner better than Schlock Neil have done in this 40, first 28 minutes. So, Ger Bradley, of course, sweeping back, wearing 12, and really doing a lot of damage as the sweeper as the ball is played by Sheen McGuigan out towards the middle of the field in comes Ronan Power trying to get it Paddy Levy's in there as well bit of stalemate there also running in there is, is Tyke Foley was he foul play on says the referee ball goes out over the line I think it's going to be belly gunner ball it is inside the 45 but Tyke Foley came there from nowhere battled hard for it wins the line ball yeah, and if you look again, Bally Gunner from Southern Ball is looking to create something, but everything has been, every option has been closed off, and Slot Neal have very much got their, 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 their um, matchups right, and they're so, so tight. They're closing on every bit of space and being touched tight with their players. Manny with the line ball in around the danger zone. That's well cut off inside by the fullback Cassidy. Gets it out as far as. McGuigan, McGuigan puts them on the attack. They're looking for the big man inside. What's he going to do? Rogers, Cockton gets the better of him there. Good play by the accountant. Sends the ball across to Billy. Okay, or to Tyke. Oh. Ronan Power, should I say? And the ball goes out over the line there. He had probably a bit too much time. Yeah, bit casual there, Ronan, going nerves, for that. Yeah. A little bit of nerves and uh, just la- lost the concentration. And the ball squirts off his hurley. Line ball to Schlock Neil. But Schlock Neil, as you say they're really playing some good hurling as well as in your face hurling yeah but they're very well drilled they're very well coached they've come with a plan they're executing it to perfection and it's worked so far and it's a, you know, it's a one point game I think most people coming up here today probably thought there'd be a four or five point gap for Bally Gunner going into half time that's certainly not the case and they have a chance now for a side and ball and it looks like this guy is going for it and who knows could be a draw game going into half time yeah Mark McGuigan he's been excellent for them all year and uh 
part of the Derry Senior team again. Six of these boys are on the Derry Senior hurling team, but he leaves actually for Brian Cassidy. He goes out in the end and takes it. So Brian Cassidy cut off there well. Oh, good well cut off there by Ian Kenny. Gets it out towards Mikey Mahoney. Back helping in his own 45. Schnapp Neil win the ball. Ger Bradley tried to come down and help there, but play on, says the referee. Two minutes of additional time. 179, Ballygunner lead by one. Peter Hogan gets the ball away to Mahoney. Good play by Paul. Late tackle again as he left that ball go. Into Desi inside. Was that pushing the back? Looked like it was from here. Desi on the sideline. Taking on one marker. Taking on two. Desi off the hurley. Desi takes the shot. Desi over Brilliant. the ball. Brilliant. Class personified by the forward cross channel soccer player there. Lovely score by him. Over the bar it goes. Beat two defenders off his hurley. Poetry in motion well, by Desi. Sometimes, Kieran, when a game is tight like that, you just need a bit of class. That's all you need is a bit of class. Desi Hutchins is just after providing an absolutely top drawer score in, a, in, in, in such a tight space. Ger Bradley's after. If this, this yeah. cannot be a yellow D- card for. Desi is running back and Ger yeah. Bradley kind of stunned his ground. I, I, I think it was the way Desi actually didn't see him and he just crashed into him but I think Bradley has made a meal out of that there's been ongoing verbals between the two of them and Bradley has been Sean in Dizzy's St- ear Stack is giving it this is farcical in my view for you see what has gone on with Pori Manny for the first 30 minutes Ger Bradley came up with Daisy and then hits the ground I think this is farcical from Sean Stack and I say even that even Gavin Whelan wouldn't give that one my god it's a yellow card for Desi Hutchinson it after just shows you one of the games you know scores of the, of the game so he's far. running back after yeah. getting it and he, okay your man stood in his ground and he probably crashed into him but uh, linesman thought differently and a yellow card for Desi Hutchinson 1-8 to, to 9 belly gunner in injury time lead by 2 points ball in again to the big foot foul Rogers. he turns on the shoulder takes his shot sends it right and wide there a bit of justice there down on that end there right and wide there and score remains 1-8 belly gunner 9 point schlock Neil. 2 points between the side ball to Peter Hogan not the best high ball to be given a man of Peter Hogan's statue there Kevin Manny out there as well near the side and line ball to schlock Neil right down here in front of, inside their own 45 stand side and you know, under our puckers again we're not getting that space Puckers are tending to be 50-50 and obviously Schlag Neil are very, very competitive in all those tight spaces. Cormac O'Doherty, the captain, the jewel star, Derry senior hurler, Derry senior footballer. Again, a lot of off the ball here and the crowd here, the under the belly gunner crowd, saw something we didn't see. We're watching the line ball, but play on, says the referee, inside the belly gunner, 65. Two minutes of additional time has been played in this first half so far. Ball by Ty Fall. Great play by Ty. Gets it away to Connor Sheehan. Oh, good block down there from literally from nowhere by the big men from Schlock Neil. It's on the 65. The Schlock Neil 65. Bursting out with the ball is Karen McCaig. He gets the ball out to the midfielder, Cormac O'Doherty. O'Doherty looking for the big man inside, Rogers. Rogers inside, lets the ball run through. Stops it from going over the end line, but in the end, can't control it. Out over the line. And fifth wide for Schlock Neal. Score remains 1-8 to 9. We should hear the halftime whistle very shortly, and that's exactly how we do. It's 1-8 to 9 points. Two points, points between the sides. If you're in Darrell's position, what would you be saying facing into the second half? Well, I think the first thing they have to do, uh, Kieran, is come to terms with the opposition sweeper, Ger Bradley. He's done way too much damage. I have not seen any sweeper be as effective against Bally Gunner this year and maybe even in recent years. He's been way too effective. That He needs to be closed down first and foremost, but secondly, we have to stop putting that ball into that D area. We're going to have to work that ball a bit more around that middle third. What we're usually good at is Mikey Manny sits deep into a pocket wide, so does Peter Hogan. We play it wide into those pockets. We need to do more of that. We're going to have to start taking scores from out the field because Desi's just not getting that space inside. But listen, Kieran, this is a very, very good schlock Neil team. They can hurl, they're aggressive, they've come with a plan, they're closing down the space, and they're going to be very, very hard to beat. This is going to, I mean, I was hoping at half time we would be, you know, four or five points up and maybe kick on with a couple of points in the second half. This is maybe the game that everybody you know this David and Goliath type battle in inverted commas where we felt that Jack Neal were going to come with a plan and we're going to be very hard to break down it's it's proven exactly that way and this is going to be a hell of a second half for Bally Gunner if we're going to reach our first ever all Ireland final so here's looking forward to an unbelievable second half it's 1-8 to 9 the Gunners lead by two points a long way to go join us for first half analysis and all the action of that second half after the break
perfect ball and Desi's been absolutely smothered and he's living off scraps and I think we're going to be living off scraps for most of the second half we're going to have to start taking scores maybe from out the field whereas we're used to putting the ball maybe from the 65 into Desi we're going to have to take our scores from the 65 and shoot from long range Tara Sullivan makes his way back over half an hour to the side who makes it to the All-Ireland final of course Belly Hill Shamrocks take on Thomas is in the other lovely ball into Kevin Mahoney from Paddy Levy Kevin gives it across on the D Conor Sheen coming forward that's a well worked score that's more like it from Belly Gunner Conor Sheen the end fixed over the bar lovely bit of interplay good score Conor yeah we've got a good start to the second half now as well and we need to build on that not leave Schlott Neil get a foothold back in this game again so puck out down the right Oshino Doherty for the slot meme and a big man trying to go towards Jerome McGuigan there to fail to hang on to it there drop inside the 44 picked up well inside by Ty Foley coming out with it trying to get it to his cousin there Kevin Mahoney but Kevin wins that ball didn't deserve it but he's won it he's inside the 13 minute line Kevin takes the shot gone across went for Billy yeah. goal number two for the Gunners great finish again by Billy O'Keefe there set up by Kevin Mahoney into Billy wasn't the sweetest of strikes but the green flag goes up 2-9 to 9 he wanted a good start further for the second yeah an exceptional by Kevin Mahoney it was a 2 on 1 situation won the ball throw through perfect ball to Billy O'Keefe brilliant brilliant play brilliant goal Valley Gunner second for Billy O'Keefe the former defender now ace attacker ball at the other end of the field straight away Brendan Rodgers has the ball turning Coughlin there Shane O'Sullivan coming out Reg will take the shot that was a body on the line job there by Philip Mahoney literally body on the line in comes Uncle Shane to help him back to Ronan Power and they have the ball back now with Tyg Foley Tyg trying to get it to Kevin he worked so hard to win that ball shouldn't have won it but he did win that ball a few minutes ago to set up Billy O'Keefe Jock Neal on the attack coming across Ronan Power read that well good play by Ronan Let's see Tony O'Gregan down there the Galway man part of the backroom team here over carrying there said referee on Conor Sheehan getting away from his marker Conor is shaking his head referee Sean Stack says it over carrying and Fergal you're shaking yours as well yeah look maybe uh, yeah. Uh, maybe I mean, maybe we're being biased but seemed a bit pedantic by Sean Stack there but looks a great great start to the second half only two minutes on the board great great start we've gone from two points up to six points up Kevin Manny has been absolutely I think he's been exceptional all through but his work rate and his vision for that last goal uh, absolutely exceptional actually he won that ball shouldn't have won it was a defender's ball but he battled so hard and then gave it to Billy and Billy put it in the back of the net what a revelation Billy has been since he's moved forward 2-1 of course against Ballier as the free is taken by Cormac O'Doherty he sends it over the bar for the Ulster champions it's 2-9 to 10 15 points to 10 a 5 point game ball out to Stephen O'Keefe lovely ball found Conor Sheehan there running away into the corner goes to Desi off the hurl down in the right hand corner Desi has it coming out to 20 line turn to his left takes the shot oh and sent oh it's right and wide I'm sure it was over from here right and wide the umpire yeah. there took a good look at it there Desi was kind of sh- shaking his head there I think there's one or two defenders there having a word with Desi over in that right hand corner but turned it very well the Gunners and Schlock Neil. who's going to get to the elusive All-Ireland final for these two proud clubs ball inside the 45 Schlock Neil trying to get onto it there Brian Cassidy he's been held up fairly well there trying to get onto the ball and Cassidy's a man given space he can do damage he's on the Derry senior team but so far he's been held pretty well by the defence line ball down here inside the 45 Paddy Levy gone back to take it is that strange leaving the midfielder coming back for yeah I would think so that's a ball for Shane O'Sullivan and push up the field for yeah. sure yeah ball towards Mikey Mahoney they're belted away from Mikey by the Schlock Meal men they come in force they come they can hurl but they can also strike long balls in like that one from Karen McKay into the big man inside Coughlin wins that one good play oh Coughlin a bit hesitant there he's dispossessed by the big man Rogers. Rogers going forward trying to work his way in trying to bulldoze his way in in the end ran out of room right and wide but Coughlin seemed to have that ball lost it let off for Gunners there puck out Saki good ball out to Mikey Mahoney good play by Mikey the 23 year old younger of the brothers there ball breaks into D oh a diving tackle by the defenders there from Schlapp Neal out to she- Shane McGuigan the wing back who likes to come forward gets the ball out to Cormac O'Doherty the midfielder lovely ball into the full forward line here this could be very very dangerous Cassidy on the run Cassidy takes a shot Cassidy sends it over the bar 
Number two for Cassidy. He's a Derry senior player. Given the right ball, he can score. Should have been a score at the other end, 2 9 to 11. Yeah, and just like the first half, I mean, we got off to a thunder start in the second half, but Schlock Neil won't go away. I mean, there's two great scores in a row, and again, building that little bit of momentum. Stephen O'Keefe there, the all star keeper. Oh, goes very close to the sideline there. A bit of fortunate there, and they win that ball. Out as far as Tyke Foley there, lucky to win that ball. Into Peter Hogan on the. F- 45, turn, shot the grip, takes the shot. Oh, that's a great score by Hogan there. Did well to win it, shot in the grip, hadn't much room to swing. That's a perfect score from Hogan. Yeah, and a brilliant ball by Tyke Foley, but we got lucky. McGuigan missed that ball, and if he, missed it, if he hadn't missed that ball, he had green grass ahead of him, and it surely would have been a score for Schlock Neal. 2 10 to 11, five and a half minutes. You're listening to George Corbett score the big match on WR, wherever you are. I hope you're enjoying it. Picked up there by Ronan Power. The under-20 man who's led that church to zone this year, but over carrying, says the referee. He pulled up Conor Sheen earlier as well. Yeah. Far the same thing. He's Sean Stack here, of course, with clear breeding in him, of course, based in Dublin, inter-county referee. His dad was no mean centre-back back in the 70s. Those old enough of us to remember the great Sean Stack, but we're looking at Sean Stack, the Ray Tor, and so far I don't think the Belly Gunner fans <laughs> no, will be sending them Christmas I, cards. I won't be year. rating him like his father for sure. Uh, Kieran, I mean, I, there's no, too soft breeze in my view, but and Cormac O'Doherty will surely put this one over, and they're hanging in and they're hanging in, they're not going away. Cormac O'Doherty, the jewel star, county football, county hurling, and Really making the hurling yeah, his own. Well, a very skillful striker. little player. Yeah, Lovely striker. striker the ball. He's 25 years of age and he's a man who really has put Derry hurling on the map. They've dominated Ulster over the last number of years. They've won Ulster in 16, 17, 19 and 21. When Antrim used to dominate, now it's Derry. Dropping aside the 45. Oh, that's well won by Kevin Manny. Came out and won the ball. Shouldn't have won it. And he sends it over yeah. the bar. Oh, that's great determination. Jeez. Came from behind. Won that ball. Great score, Kevin Manny. Yeah, if we were to pick a man in the match for a Bally Gunner, I says, you know, 40 minutes into this game, it'll be Kevin Manny. He's having a thundering game out Hard there. Hard to believe today. he's under 20, but he's yeah. playing with such confidence and such determination. Really leading the forward line at the moment. 2-11, that's 17-12. to 12. Seven minutes gone in the second half. Hogan dispossesses and wins the ball. Great play by Hogan. The speed merchant sends the ball across the line, goes straight into the sweeper again, Ger Bradley. Fails to get it on the first attempt, gets it on the second. The big, the big man from Schlock Neal, the Derry senior hurler, puts them on the attack inside the 45. Ronan wins it. The under 20 man gives it back to the 36 year old Shane. Now in the left hand corner, not quite sure who that ball was for. I think it's for Porrick, the nephew. Porrick's hurley being pulled there from behind there by ah. Shane McGuigan, and then it's a free against Porrick there. He was running for that ball. Porrick is shaking his head. From here, we can see a hurley was being held. Referee said no, it was the opposite way around, and he penalises Porrick, and it's a free for Schlock Neil. But Porrick really, literally, not been given an inch. No, I mean, in fairness to Porrick, it's been all game. He was running for that ball, hurley been held, and then a free for a push in the back on, on Kevin Manny. Okay, Kevin Manny's was a free, but so was Porrick Manny's before that, which should have been a free uh, other way into Bally Gunner. But that sweeper, Ger Bradley, he, or, uh, Bradley, he's very, very clever, uh, uh, Kieran. He's reading the game. He's not just in the space, but he's reading that game very, very well. He's cutting out all those tr- diagonal balls. He's got the pace to get there, but he's also got the hurling brain to get there. Cormac O'Doherty, the captain from inside his own 65. That one is right and wide. He had been deadly up to now. He'd be disappointed with that. He's deadly accurate. That's a letter for Belly Gunner. Yeah, and just as you'd hope. <laughs> Seven minutes gone in the second half. 2-11. That's 17 points to 12. Long ball. Dropping inside the D. Batted down. Well won inside by Mikey Mahoney. And Mikey sends it over the bar there. Again a ball he probably couldn't have, shouldn't have won. The 23-year-old grabs that ball the motor from De La Salle sends it over and yeah, Mikey's been having a great season he's probably a little bit quieter today but he's been closely marked but a great score Mikey Mannion brings the gap back to 6 2-12 12 points almost 9 minutes gone here in Parnell Park it's the All-Ireland semi-final ball in the middle of the field Cormac O'Doherty already has scored 5 Put Slock Neal in the attack covering back his Ronan power that's good play Ooh. oh but over, overplayed it there ball breaks inside a chance inside did Barry Coughlin foul play on says the referee I think he got away with that one Fergal ball comes out to Peter Hogan inside the 45 stand side what are his options he's going long Bradley's in there if the ball breaks he's going to sweep it up that's exactly what he does in comes Manning crashes into him Braille breaks to Billy O'Keefe Billy Walder w- w- walks it back to Dizzy Dizzy trying to get into Mikey bit of overplay there in the end it goes right and wide bit of overplay 
could have been lucky there yeah, for, but he got away with it. I would have fancied Desi to come back in the field as he always does turn back in spin and put that one over the bar I think the last wide he got probably has rock, rocked his confidence Possibly, a little because yeah. he's a man who's very hard on himself all the time he's a very high standard of play ball lobbed in near, near the 45 Levy picks it up good play by the student out to Ronan Power working this ball up now man he has it what options has he he's steady he's turning to his right left hand side this time towards Billy snapped well into the fence there that's good play by McGuigan they get the ball long there the cornerback Karen McCaig opens the shoulders coming out to catch it is Tyke Foley there he's late that Paul will be proud the way this man has developed into a few super senior hurling defender Paul going to Peter Hogan Peter from outside the six Peter star. Hogan over the bar put up the white flag they said over the far side ball breaks Hogan delivers that's a great score he's four to the afternoon that's a real yeah, inspiring point and I said Kevin Manny earlier but Peter Hogan has matched them also point for point play for play Peter Hogan has been outstanding again today 2.13 to 12 that's a seven point differential they're building it up they've struggled after a great start in the first half led by two at half time but that goal at the start of the second half a second for Billy O'Keefe has proved vital ball back to Shane O'Sullivan in the right corner back position not quite sure if that was for Mikey or for Conor Sheehan tries to flick it on there bit of overplay by Conor there corner back McNeil is coming out for it and they have that ball work back in Ger Bradley the sweeper out towards the middle of the field now they're trying to build Doherty tries to work it in in around the danger zone this could be very very dangerous out comes Stephen O'Keefe doesn't hold it in comes Shane O'Sullivan to pick up the crumbs there ball out to Paddy Levy one of the oldest to the oldest to one of the youngest on the team Levy gets it to another young man on the team 19 year old Ronan Power Ronan opens the shoulder sends it long covering back is Bradley for Schlockmead the Derry champions they trail 2.13 to 12 they have possession was that over play there by the cornerback there Carl McCaig no says the referee play on he starred in that county final as the ball goes out over the line there line ball end to end stuff and as Brian Flannery mentioned at half this is a very entertaining game for us for us and his neutrals <laughs> ball now Paddy Levy Levy works the ball back Ronan power good play by Ronan bit of overplay by Ronan outside of 45 he meets the maroon and white hoops of Schlock Needler booting it ahead is Michal McGrath covering back is Shane really taking up a lot of the dirty ball in the second half the man who inspires excellence in his in his career is expiring excellence here today as the ball breaks to his nephew that's Kevin Mahoney off the left didn't strike it well at all he'd be disappointed with that ball into Oshino Doherty 2.13 to 12 7 points between the sides you're listening to George Corbett scored a big match as McGuigan sends it long inside the D they're holding inside that's well won inside that's super play by the defence there out to Peter Hogan whose back makes himself available every time because Ian Kenny caught that ball under pressure and a free there the roar from the belly gunner well, I, think it's a very, yeah. I think it's a very ironic cheer from the belly gunner crowd because poor Manny has been assaulted all game it's the first free he's got from uh, from the from the attention of Shane McGuigan so uh, that roar is a, a, an absolutely ironic cheer from uh, from the Valley Gunner supporters today David Aaron. Frank stands his arms are folded Darrow Keefe is pacing the, or Darrow Sullivan he's pacing the ground as Parry comes out to take this from 4 metres in from the sideline inside his own 65 about 60 metres from his own goal hitting it towards the right hand post I think it's gone too far to the right yes exactly that's where it's gone 10 wide for the Gunners was the scoreboard you look at 2.13 to 12 better complexion from Belly Gunner on the scoreboard puck out by Oshino Doherty dropping near the 45 ball breaks down Sheehan again playing a lot of ball small in stature but what an engine he has very Jimmy Barron like as it goes into the full forward line Mahoney inside again trying to hold up that's good play by Kevin trying just to flick the ball away Kevin Manny Kieran has been absolutely outstanding and what you might not see or even on the television or basically for the listeners at home the amount of running he's doing the amount of movement the amount of options he's given for the likes of Conor Sheen the likes of Philip Manny or halfbacks for, for, for uh, uh, options for that, that out ball and then to win that free and hopefully hopefully this one should be a tap over for Parr but Kevin Manny today the work rate he's done the, 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 the running he's done and then his touch on the ball he's been absolutely outstanding and Kevin leaves it 
for older brother Pori outside the 45 hitting into the goal on our right there but he pulled it right and right he'll be disappointed with that I was just going to say no such thing as a top over at this level but uh, you'd normally expect you'd be writing yeah. down when Pori stands over them he'll be disappointed with that coming up to the 15 minutes coming near the second water break 2.13 to 12 that's 19 to 12 7 points between the sides but Schlock Neil will bat to the very end we saw him against Belly Hale the All-Ireland champions a few short years ago they're on the run again big chance for the big man coming forward here behind McGrath did he overplay it play hand says the referee ball breaks for Sheen McGuigan she doesn't pick it up but Connor Sheehan does that great play by small Connor small as statue as I mentioned but a skill to boot towards Mikey hard pull there Paul McLean right in front of the referee a man who was part of the team that won in 2016 and he's gone into the little red book Interesting for Ballygunner, uh, Kieran. something that they don't do very often, they've taken Desi out, he's now out in half forward and he's operating around midfield and they're looking to get him on more ball, you don't see that happening too often from Ballygunner because they always want him on the edge of the square trying to create space left and right, but that just goes to show you how well Schlock Neal closed that do- uh, down, how well Ger Bradley has done by sitting in front of him and now we're seeing Desi looking for more space as was well around that middle third. I see the great Paul Flynn down under us, of course, part and parcel of the breakthrough. Belly Gunner side with yourself, Fergal. Back in the 90s, Parik has pulled that one left and wide. He'll be disappointed with that, but I just think what has been happening to him off the ball has really s- seemed to have got to him at this stage. He's shaking his head, but the, it's, it's, it's the younger brothers have come to the fore, particularly Kevin yeah. and indeed Peter as well. The start of the second half was so crucial. He got it to the second, but he built on it, Fergal. It's 2 13 to 12. You lead by seven with 15 minutes to Yeah, play. it was a two point game at half time. It's now a seven point game with, you know, at the second water break. All we need now, hopefully, is to go out at the start of this uh, last quarter maybe tag on one or two scores and that should be enough because it'll be a tough uphill battle if we can tag on one or two scores one or two points for Schlock Neil to overturn maybe an 8, 9 possibly even a 10 point game if we can tag on those few scores but Park certainly has been off for the freeze he seems rattled from all that attention and Billy O'Keefe is, is an excellent free take as well so possibly that's an option for the last quarter As regards the panel we, we spoke all year about the good panel you have do you see now is the time to make a change or do you leave it if you were in charge would you leave it yeah, I'd there? leave it I don't think there's anybody not hurling well enough that they need to make a change obviously sometimes you want you think you might have some impact so but Fresh I think lift. everybody out there they're fit you know they're playing well Kevin is playing well Mikey's doing well Peter's doing really well I'll never take off Corey Manny Billy's after getting two goals so I wouldn't make any change there possibly Ronan at, at wing back is under a little bit of pressure there but certainly Shane going back into that sweet role has steadied the ship for us for sure so 50 minutes to the side can Bally Gunner make it to the All-Ireland final in Crow Park 213 to 12, seven points between the sides. And Schlock Neil there going to literally throw the kitchen sink. They've been throwing it since the start of the game, but now you're going to get the presses off the wall as well. They're going to give it everything. These boys have been here before. They've four Ulster titles. They've been beaten in three All Ireland semi finals. Kula, Napirshig, and latterly, of course. Belly Hale, Shamrocks, who play in the second semi-final this evening against St. Thomas of the Galway. It's all concentration now on this final 15 minutes for Belly Gunner. They lead by seven. What can they do to hang on to that lead? Paddy Levy, they say the best form of defence is attack, and that's exactly what they're doing into the full forward line. Out comes Kevin Mahoney, picks the ball up, did well to pick it under a bit of pressure, scoops it back to an unmarked Peter Hogan. He's been deadly accurate so far, but I think he's pulled it left. Yeah, he has pulled it left and wide. Rushed his shot a bit there, but good bit of play again. Kevin Manny in the build-up. Yeah, this is going to be interesting now. Schlock Neil have taken away the sweeper. They've gone 15 on 15, so this is going to be very interesting to see how this last 15 minutes plays out. Long puck out from Ochi O'Doherty over near the far side. In is Desi Hutchinson trying to keep pressure on with Paddy Levy very near the side and Lank on the far side. Line ball goes to Belly Gunner, but interesting to see Desi tracking back that far and literally Desi being taken out of that well now is the time I put him back in because they don't have a sweeper and now is the time to put Desi back in there Leave, there will be space there now in this last 15 minutes and if he gets space he will score Tara looks on the banished door his brother is on the team Shane his six nephews on the team his brother Rory is a selector and Granny Lillian is up in the stand if she's not gone behind the stand to look for a cigarette as the ball comes across how's Connor Sheehan Connor Sheehan trying to get the ball into his hand there fails to do so picked up in the middle by Chrissy McCaig he's been quite to his relative high standards as Mikey Mahoney does well to win that Mikey gets the ball across to Kevin Kevin gets the ball inside 
Good chance here for Porig. Porig in a bit of space. Gets it back to Billy O'Keefe. Billy has a look. Billy takes a shot. Billy sends it over the bar. Well worked score. Porig very much involved. Back to Billy O'Keefe. And Billy gets a crucial score. <laughs> in that passage of gate play, Porig drags it to the ground again. But in fairness to Porig, he'll keep going, he'll keep going, he'll keep going. He set it up for Billy O'Keefe for a tap over. Great score, eight point lead. 2.14 to 12. That's eight points in any man's language. 18 minutes gone in the second half. But these boys from the north as the ball breaks to big Brendan Rogers, he takes a shot that's gone over the bar they've pulled him out they're obviously going more 15 on 15 and Rogers has come out he's a big man he's a footballer he's a decent hurler and he's a man who can win ball yeah he's a handful for sure and it's uh, you know it's a 7 point game there's 12 minutes left it's certainly not gone for Schlag Neil good ball again from Stephen O'Keefe oh, picks out Peter Hogan standing on the far sideline here in Parnell Park comes in from the sideline shortens the grip but again, it's gone right and yeah, wide. He had more time than he actually knew. He did everything right. Yeah, he more time. He could, bit, yeah. yeah, he could have gone back onto his good side and probably would have had a certain score. But uh, 14th wide for to, Belly Gunner. Easy, easy to say from here. The wides are going up. David Franks, the arms are folded. He's the cool customer down the line, but hard to stay cool in this situation. Rory's there as well. Pat Harnan is there as well. But we'll follow the play. Ball down here in front of us here. Paul McNeil sending it in around the D. Shane O'Sullivan trying to get his hand on it. But it's the big man inside there, Cormac O'Doherty, who has it. Cormac leaves the ball back to Brian Cassidy, and Cassidy sends it over the bar. That's as good a score as you'd see. It's a Going score. away from goal, yeah. over his shoulder. Cassidy delivers a great score. The Derry senior hurler doing it for his club. Yeah, brilliant score, you know, and they're just not going to go away. And, you know, the longer they stay in this game, it'll get that bit nervy for Bally Gunner, and we could be set up for a grandstand finish here for Schnapp sure. Neil are raising the bar of Derry hurling in Ulster hurling beaten last year by Offaly in the Christie ring but they've high hopes for a big performance from the county team but it's all about Schlock Neil now the ball goes to Ronan again took his eye off the ball there big casual here for the men here from Schlock Neil Sheen McGuigan going forward what's he going to do he's holding it his brother's on the team is he trying to find the brother no he plays it inside to the full forward Rogers from a difficult angle if that goes over that's a super score by Rogers Look, I think Ronan, you know. Four point for Rogers, the jewel star. Yeah, Ronan, inexperienced player, just that little bit nervy, and perhaps that's the place Eddie Hayden is there. Eddie's a super hurler. Perhaps someone with Eddie's experience might be the man to bring in at this stage. But look, it's back to a five point game after being an eight point game, looking like the game was nearly done for us. Looking like it was nearly, we were nearly home and hose. But Schlott and Neil are not going to make here. Paddy pa- Carney comes on, a 21 year old for them. They're throwing the kitchen sink, as we mentioned earlier. Paddy Levy, Paddy Levy, putting Belly Gunner on the attack. 2.14 to 15. They lead by five, the Warford champions. Under a bit of pressure there. Kevin Mahoney in defence, trying to get his hand onto the ball. Pedder Carney is back. The defender there, the substitute, who has just come on as the ball goes very near the sideline. Ball goes out over the line. That's No, it doesn't over the line. It's a push in the back, so the referee, Sean Stack, very obvious with his signals there. That what that was for out comes Oshino Doherty the stopwatch says 21 minutes the scoreboard 2.14 to 15 20 to 15 ball goes long from O'Doherty the experienced county keeper cut off inside well cut off by Ian Kenny Ian Kenny tries to give the ball to Ronan Ronan scoops the ball back to Uncle Shane O'Shane just telegraphed that and ran into a bit of traffic Billy O'Keefe and Ronan are back to help him Ronan does it there goes Philip Mann he have not seen him for a while they clear the ball but into space way over on the far side Carl McKay comes across to take it the 29 nine year old part of the team that won their first title back in 2016 in Ulster the ball goes in towards Tyg Foley near the end line dressing room corner far side that's good play by Tyg out it goes to Conor Sheehan Sheehan and Levy have been a revelation with the ground they've covered Levy coming away with it good play by the under 20 star late hard tackle there gets the ball over to Desi but Levy there the referee we saw it from here the right in front of the linesman but I must say the midfield pairing have been relentless yeah. Paddy Levy and, and Conor Sheen but Paddy Levy the work he gets through and the unselfish work that he does and winning those rooks and giving those flicks off and the amount of possessions he wins and the amount of passes he gives during the game you know are, it's, it's, he's a superb player he's absolutely central to what Bally Gunner do now and he's a player I think is very much underrated Jack Cassidy coming on got a point the last day after he was called off wearing 22 he's one of the young boys on this Schlock Neil team over on the far side hold up and play I think Paddy's okay yeah Paddy Levy is okay off comes number 13 Mark McGuigan he's been held quite but on comes Jack Cassidy brother of the full back and Mark McGuigan makes his way the Derry County man being replaced by Jack Cassidy the score 
2.40 to 15. The time, 23 minutes, 7 minutes left here, plus stoppages. Ball goes in to around the 20 metre line for Belly Gunner on the attack. Covering back, as always, is the corner back there. McKay, they, get, they clear their ball. There's cement from Schlock Neal way over to the far side. The maroon and white hoops against the black and red of Belly Gunner here. They have a bit of space here outside the 45. It's Rogers who has moved out, giving a lovely ball inside. Dangerous ball across to Sheen McGuigan. McGuigan is going forward. Was he fouled? Yes, says the referee. Yes, says the referee. But outside the 13 metre line, Shee McGuigan, he's been quite all afternoon. He's a d- danger man. He's a county star. He was on the run there, but Rogers has started to open up play and create a lot yeah. since he moved and out. Cormac O'Dard, he's gone into that full forward yes. end and he's a he's a really top, top hurler, really skillful hurler, and he's causing damage in there. I think that's a yellow, I didn't see it, I think a yellow for Shane O'Sullivan. Probably had to pull him down, professional foul. You know, we've six in the goal here, he'll probably go for it. Um, you know, you'd be hoping with six in the goal he wouldn't get it. Who knows, he might tap it over and bring it back to a four-point game. That pressure will be on so Bally Gunner for the last six or seven minutes. Up outside the 20, the way he's standing, I think he's going to tap it over. There's five defenders on the goal line, and that's yeah. exactly what he does. Sends four it over points, the bar. Six minutes, but there's probably two or three injury times, so you've probably got nine minutes left, and it's only a four-point game. So this is very much, as I say, I know it's a cliche, but it's very much in the melting pot now, Kieran. We'll never forget, seven points up, seven minutes to go against yeah. Passage Fergal, who, who Stop. dares Stop. to talk in 2013. Stop. Puck out down the right, Stephen O'Keefe, Saki. The former county player tries to pick out Paddy Levy. That's exactly what he does. Pinpoint pass by the keeper. Paddy Levy, what a game he is. Inside to Kevin Mahoney. Good play by Kevin there. Younger of the brothers inside the 20-meter line. He's still going forward, being pulled and dragged. Yes, says the referee. In the end, he gives the, the advantage, but I think he's going to give the free, or is he going to give it to Billy O'Keefe? Brilliant, it brilliant by Kevin Mahoney again. Brilliant. He won a ball under pressure. Two men dragging out of him and gave a ball to uh, Billy O'Keefe. But he had the free already. Kevin Mahoney has been absolutely central to ba- Bally Gunner today. Five points back to a five-point gap. He's dead. Mick, of course, part of the team that made the breakthrough. Back in 2001, of course, his mum, Clara, part of the Sullivan con- connection here this afternoon. From the puck out, 2.15 to 6. That was a very important score for the Gunners. Rogers trying to shake off a tackle there. Did he overcarry? Yes, says the referee. He's been consistent in that. Rogers isn't happy there. Out came the left fist there. I Rogers think- right in front of us there. I don't think the referee saw it. He's a county footballer. He's a big man. And I think the referee or the linesman here must have seen it because the lift. I think Keelan that's harsh. Be I, happy think, with that one. I think that's harsh on Slot Neal. He's been doing it to Belly Curry. He did twice. Of, I think they're harsh. I mean, he was being pushed. He was being fouled. You know, I didn't. I, but he retaliated. I, he did retaliate, again. yeah. But like these frees are probably, uh, to, to me, they probably shouldn't be frees. Now, Billy O'Keefe, interested in back in these frees part because obviously uh, has, has probably nominated Billy to take him. And he is a good free taker, a great striker of a ball. And his eye is in today. He's got 2 2 from play. Yeah. So it's all to play for. 26 minutes almost on the clock plus stoppages 2.15 to 16 left and wide left and wide four points of normal paper we're going to have three of right there, for sure. left and wide he'll be disappointed two or three frees there not going his way from the puck out they win it in style they're the big man Jack Cassidy who has just come on they work the ball forward there coming forward is Shane McGuigan Shane McGuigan takes the shot Oh, into Stephen O'Keefe there. Was he fouled? Yes, says the referee. But Shane McGuigan, normally wing back, has come up to the forward. They're literally throwing the kitchen sink. They have the big men up in the front. They're really going for it now with minutes to go. Yeah, and the early this, and Pardig is going to get a card, and it's certainly so. <laughs> he gets a yellow card from Shane McGuigan after being tearing and dragged for the day. But look, it is a yellow card for sure. He pulled him down, professional foul, going through on goal. It's probably going to be a tap over again, I suspect. He's probably not going to go for goal. It's going to bring it back to a four point game, which will be a very, very nervous finish for Bally Gunner. Doherty coming out to take it he's doing well from place balls long and short and close in what's he going to do with this one Cormac O'Doherty the captain the jewel star sends it over the bar look here all all Schlock Neal need is a goal if they get a goal we're set up for a grandstand finish and a very very nervy one 2.15 to 17 points nobody leaving here this afternoon four points between the sides Stephen O'Keefe down on our right the Bank of Ireland man opens the shoulders the all-star keeper drops it down closer to the D than the 45 it's a case of who can get their hands on the ball the man who has it is Paul Rick Manny dragged to the ground there right in front of the referee and I think Shane McGuigan well, if, he's really just, if he's not going to get a yellow card for that can I don't know what a yellow card is because he actually had Paul Rick Manny in a headlock I mean 
it's, Porrick it's, won it's, that ball very well there's two big men around him there but Porrick made him he's taking the free there's Billy Billy coming out to take that free so uh Porrick it's leaves a it to over, but it's an absolutely crucial one you know it's a, it's a nervy one it's an absolutely Outside crucial the, time of the game yeah left of the upright hitting into the the airport goal as it's called and he sends it over the bar here down in on our left the scoreboard ticks to 216 to 17 Shea Fitzpatrick is leaning on the wall below is he going to see a dream come true for the boys in black and red he's the physio he's the coach he's been ever present Tony O'Gregan is down there as well the Galway man they've brought in all the heavy guns here to try and help Belly Gunner get to that All-Ireland final ball breaks Conor Sheehan he's been outstanding all through I'm sure he's dead his summer here in the stand cheering him on the Garda the assistant commissioner as the ball breaks to Desi on the run and Desi sends it Brilliant. over the bar lovely ball in Conor Sheehan has done it all day give it to Desi made it look so simple over the bar yeah, the that's, yeah, the absolutely, and that's kind of the insurance when it's a six-point game now, only one minute of normal time left. Shocking, they're going to need two goals to win this stoppages. game. Well won again in the middle. Mikey Mahoney has worked tirelessly. Gets the ball back. Ty Foley. Ty looking aside for Desi. Desi with the space. Turn to his left. Desi like the Brilliant. Desi sends it over the bar. Number four for the number ten. As you say, Kieran, come at the air, come at the man. When the pressure's on, his last few minutes, Daisy, he's been brilliant, brilliant again. 24 to 17, 29 minutes. Or on the far side. Inside the 45, there's Schlock Neil men down on the ground. They've been here before in the All Ireland. They've been beaten three times. Belly Gunner have been beaten by Clarenbridge. Belly Gunner were beaten by Belly Hale Shamrocks. But today it looks like they're finally going to make it to an All-Ireland final. The stopwatch says 29 and a half minutes, plus the stoppages. Philip Mahoney breaks it down towards his own 45. Ball one went inside by the big man inside. He's given a chance for here. Michal McGrath takes the shot. What a save by Stephen O'Keefe there. Michal McGrath on the run. The Derry senior hurler gave it everything. Stephen O'Keefe, as he has done all year, throughout Waterford, throughout the Munster campaign. Saves went to his knee. Ball to Porrick Man. He's standing on the sideline. He's gone long. It's gone right and wide. The 16 wide, but it's the scoreboard counts, Fergal. 218 yeah, to 17. What a save by He's done it all year. But, and not only saves it, but gets the ball away from goal as well. Time ticking down. Three minutes of additional time. Oh, Doherty sends it in around the danger zone. Out comes Stephen O'Keefe, leaving it out over the end line. In front of the umpire. Umpire waves wide. Is that the final attack from Schlock Neil? 31 minutes on the clock. Haven't seen the board 17. go up. It's three minutes of additional three time. Minutes. Stephen O'Keefe with the puck out. Down here on our right. Now he'll slow this down as much as he possibly can. Over on the far side. It's Peter Hogan working hard inside the 45. Lose possession. In comes Bradley. They work the ball across here to halfback Michael McGrath. He likes to come forward. As we saw there a few minutes ago. The Derry senior hurler gets it onto the wing forward. Sheen McGuigan, he's on the D now. McGuigan hitting into the danger zone. Great hook from behind. Ronan was there. Mikey was there. And in the end, the ball breaks for Belly Gunner. Coming out with the ball. Good play by Ian Kenny. He looks full of running in these dying minutes. Ball out to Porrick Mahoney. Out around the middle of the field. Playing it into the corner to Billy O'Keefe. The goal getter today. Two goals today from Billy in the left hand corner. Hurley seemed to be held, but Billy shakes off his marker. Stands side, tries to work the ball across. In the end, is swept up inside. And back it goes to Oshino Doherty. The Schlock Neil goalie. 31 and a half minutes, almost 32 minutes on the clock. Three minutes of additional time, whatever the ref is going to add on. After that, ball in the middle of the field. Oshino Doherty, Cormac Doherty now. Let's the ball go. What can they do here on the run? Corey Carney there on the run tries to scoop a ball good chance for goal it's a goal for Schlock Neeler they've worked the ball up they didn't give up and in the end it hits it in the back of the net there but uh, they held on to possession there and in the end Stephen O'Keefe had literally no chance there as the ball came forward I think it's the big midfielder who did the damage there was it the halfback was it the halfback Shane McGuigan yeah I think it was McGuigan their halfback and uh Oh, one minute 12 40 seconds of normal time left and four points should be enough 60 second minute we're into two and a half minutes of additional time of the three hard tackle the answer is the referee Kevin Mahoney over near the far side and hits it hits it over the bar and the yeah, black and red flags go up in parallel park 
for the men in black and red 2.19 to 17 that should be game set and match now should be has to be Mount Sine made it to an All-Ireland final De La Salle made it to an All-Ireland final and now it looks as if Belly Gunner will be joining them for the very very first time in their lustrous career a bit of pulling and dragging there inside the 45 and Sean Stack there just taking out the notebook as he has been all afternoon 2.19 that's 25 to 117 to 20 a 5 point differential and some of the Stock Neil crowd are starting to move they came travelled down last night they left no stone unturned they had 8 weeks concentrating on the hurling but it's Belly Gunner to the fore here in Parnell Park you listen to the George Corbus go the big match on WLR George, the proud belly gunnerman, and he'll be happy to see what's happening here. The ball breaks into Cormac O'Doherty, hits it in low, inside the third, pulling hard inside. Stephen O'Keefe comes out and throws his body on that one. Over near the far corner, dressing room corner, 33 and a half minutes. The whistles are going up, and they're from the belly gunner crowd down here on our left. Throw McGuigan over on the far side there. They're holding up possession. Well won inside. Paddy Levy out to Parik Mahani. Parik Mahani stands there. Out of the line, it's all over, it's all over. A regional Ireland final for the very first time in the club's history. They joined Mount Sion and De La Salle. They made it to Pro Park for the big final. 219 to 117. They did it the hard way, led by two at half time. But a second goal for Billy O'Keefe at the start of the second half really was a divisive score. 219, 117. Fergal Hartley. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that was closer than I think anybody would have liked uh, I think we knew coming up here we were going to have a really really tough game against Loch Neal and look all credit to Loch Neal they came with a game plan they're very very well drilled you know they're well able to hurl they knew who our danger men were they took Parik Manny out of the game as much as they possibly could they double marked Desi and you know kept his particularly in the first half kept his impact somewhat limited uh, you know Ger Bradley did a brilliant brilliant job as sweeper you have to say Loch Neal had their homework done in Bally Gunner and you have to give them all credit but overall you know I think Bally Gunner deserving winners okay five point win uh, deserving winners but you know Schlock Neal just kept fighting 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 till the very end and even that goal at the end you know obviously uh, put Bally Gunner under pressure and left it with a bit of a nervy finish but uh, look just as a club man as a Bally Gunner man absolutely proud so so happy to be in our first ever All-Ireland final and I think it's uh, you know more than these boys deserved what a game of hurling that Fergal what a game of hurling for the month of January yeah look the surface is it's a tight enough pitch the surface was good it was a perfect day and look it was two two top hurling teams I mean you don't become four time Ulster champions without being a good hurling team and Schlock Neal are a good team as we know Bally Gunner are a good team and two I suppose you could call them heavyweights going absolutely blow for blow and giving everything throwing everything and I have to say look overall there was a bit of niggle here and there but it was by and large done in a sportsman like uh, manner and uh, just two t- top top teams going at it a uh, brilliant game of hurling as a belly gunner man hard stop and stuff <laughs> now we're joined once again by former Abbey side Grace and goalkeeper and Warford keeper Humphrey Kelher a proud Warford this afternoon to see belly gunner make it to the final absolutely I'm so thrilled for belly gunner a, a club that deserved to be in many other finals as well and, and, and Fergal here would know that but you know they're there uh, but I do believe the, a word of caution about you know it's a different quality of match that will be played against either Belly Hale or Thomas's. now give great credit to Schlock Neal they kept going but the old saying Kieran, is very simple it says goals win matches and certainly uh, Watford uh, the Watford champions Belly Gunner should have maybe had a, another goal early on in the first half that we should have settled it but certainly the second goal at the start of the second half settled them big time and you could see that the striking was much better than from a lot of the players later, later on as the game went on in the first half they got the goal from Billy after three and a half minutes the start of the second half after a minute and a half Billy delivers again a second goal but this time Belly Gunner put the boot to the floor because they left Schlock Neal back in in the first half after dominating the opening ten they were and then you know in fairness to Schlock Neal I, I believe strongly that if there was a better full forward in there on, on, on Coughlin that it might have been a different result because he that the, the full forward that was there just did not deliver having won a lot of ball but at the end of the day a win is a win it doesn't matter how you got it uh uh, you know the the the, 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 the Bally- Watford will be represented by a great team of Bally Gunner in the All Ireland final, and we must all be proud of that. But everybody stood up today. Everybody worked hard, and you know there, I saw you know there was Daisy Hutchinson back in the half back line at the, in the middle of the second half, just to make sure that he was fighting for that ball. And-
Keith Kohar, this is Tussle Lech na Himmerhead, the Khid AIB. Billy O'Keefe, look, first of all, congratulations, you're into an All Ireland final, finally. Your mother, relief must be huge. Absolutely, look, it's I've been on the road a long time, like this team, like it's, you know, eight years in Waterford, and as, as good as they are, like, you know, you, you always end, finish the year, like, you know, with a loss, and it's something that always kind of eats away at you, and you come back each year that bit hungrier, so. Look, it's, uh, it's every it's every team's goal when they win their own county, you know, to push on. And you know, we're absolutely blessed. What what an opportunity! You know, we're the last two, or we will be the last two uh, teams training. You know, in the next two weeks, and you know, it's just a fantastic opportunity, and we're just privileged to be in it. We got that sense off you after the Munster final, even chatting to Dara before the game here. And I know it's easy to talk before a game after, uh, before the result, but there was just that steely determination about you that you weren't going to be stopped today, and that you would take that final step towards the final. Yeah, I suppose, look, it's just it's every game. It's one after another. You know, you play the Munster final, you go out. It's Munster final at the end of the day. Like, you know, it's against Kilmallock and Slimmer champions. You go out, you know, as if it's your last game you're ever going to play. And you come out in an All-Ireland semi-final. It's the exact same thing, you know. And, and, and if, if anything, you know, we have to up our performance. And we knew coming in today, like, it's going to be nothing more than a savage battle. And that's exactly what we got. And, you know, fair play to them. They're a savage outfit, like, you know. And I, I don't think it would matter what they're playing, hurling, football, whatever sport they play, like, you know, they die in their boots and they show it every bit. And we've, uh, we've the utmost respect for them. I'm sure Darrow would have been talking during the week and indeed today about getting a good start. Not only did you get the good start at the start of the first half, but you got it again at the start of the second half. And it just took any kind of momentum away from Schlock Neil. And obviously, your own two goals were crucial in that start. Yeah, look, I think everyone tries to target the start and with the water breaks, it's, you try and target the restarts then again, like, you know, they're so crucial, you know, you get, you get to have a word with your teammates, you get to have a word with your managers and make, taking full advantage of that is always going to be key, you know, whoever's going to be successful at the, at the final whistle and, you know, we're, we're blessed and we're very grateful that that was us today. Uh, and just finally, uh, before I let you go, I know they're doing the warm down there behind you, but I mean, it's going to be a special couple of weeks in the club uh, for Paris, for everyone involved with the club to finally be focusing in on that trip to Croke Park. Yeah, that's it. Look, we're, we're part of a, a massive club, like, you know, and full of fantastic people. And there's people here that we've, we've really wanted to play for today, like, you know, and there's special people that that we want to bring up that M9 now to, to the all in final game. Again, we're just grateful that we have that opportunity to bring those fans up as well as as well as well the team bus. You know, we're, we're playing for everyone in our community too. Well, some of those people are the, the likes of Jennifer and Donna Malone, and uh, I'm sure you enjoyed that game here today. Uh, but very best of luck with the preparations. Go well in Croke Park and Kogor de Chisarist. Cheers. Thank you. Gormila. So, three half to Nick Billy O'Keefe, I guess, quite a bit gunner, Lenny Taina Olivu, and Glehe Kanashe, Connor Wee, Connor Sheehan, the four and Kate score, though, be Stephen uh, O'Keefe, Geneva, I guess, Genohok. Ach, uh, wie na score na attacht uh, te agus topic doiv uh, Shahi Peter Hogan ach rohig an cool Lewis ach lehe Billy O'Keefe ach rechnig agus wie Berna agus the Sullis Leid an afor na Hook Brendan Rogers Rostal the lean a cool Fala Vick Gunner le gaha van leag is Kera Hulin naim shike wie Desi Kewen an yon gavur she hain Kera Hulin riv teant schrieb ach ni akamur an irid son de ach uh, shinnu gavid mar shin Connor Sheehan agus Lewis Billy O'Keefe gach uh, Kaharu for Balibic Gunner and Cade score Agus uh, for Shaheen and Dahul Agus and Kulik to Sandara Laha Marshin um, De Reamer a Huygen Cleha Raig Vy ni smos boisica Ni dain awr sa reachar in the le Shain Agus for Desi Kulin Ella Riven Dera Riven Kulik Shane McGuigan A Yen Kintan a Riva Kui Kulin Idin a Forna Balibic Gunner 3